Good evening. I'd like to call the special town meeting to order. We have examined the warrant, uh, and all is in order. We certainly have more than a quorum. 35 is required, so uh, it's nice to see this many people here for a, a special meeting. Um, if you're comfortable, if you could please rise and face the flag for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag and to the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we do have a, uh, a, not a, not a large number of articles, but some substantial articles to get through. So I'd ask that everyone try to focus their thoughts in as best if they are coming up to speak. The, the goal is to let everyone speak that wants to. Um, but if someone has made your point before and, and you're comfortable with it, um, let that stand. So my job is to kind of make sure everyone is heard and that we keep the moving, uh, meeting moving along. So I'll be, be working with you on that. Um, at at check-in, everybody should have received the package, which should explain the articles that we're going to be discussing tonight. Just to, again, explain, the articles are what are put out publicly to let everyone know what is subject to be talked about this evening. The actual motions that the speakers will make, that's what you're acting on. So the motions may differ a little from the articles, and, and the motion is what controls. So as the speakers make those motions, that's uh, what we want to listen to carefully. Um, if you wish to make any type of an amendment to a motion that's made that does need to be in writing, there is paper up here and a pen so we can help you with that, but there's no oral motions to amend that can be made. Um, there are microphones, as you'll see, in both aisles, so if you do wish to speak, if you can just come forward, uh, wait to be recognized by the moderator, and once you're recognized, go ahead and speak, but we don't want to speak over each other. Um, and with that, and, and when you do speak, I'm sorry, you need to state your name, uh, just the street you're on, not necessarily your specific address, um, and, and go from there. So with that, I'd like to introduce the head table. I'm Dan Graves. I'm the town moderator. And to my right? Lisa Mead, town council. Brenda Hill, town accountant. Cassie Sanderell, town clerk. Christopher Dunn, acting town administrator. Blake Gilmore, select board. Tim Hilchey, select board. Trevor McDaniel, Select Board. Julie Chalfont, Finance Committee. James Cambius, Finance Committee. Mark Brennan, Finance Committee, Zoning Board of Appeals, Capital Improvement Planning Committee Chair. Elizabeth Brown, Finance Committee. Dave Sharp, Finance Committee. Thank you. Uh, to start, I have uh, a couple of motions. My first motion, I move that the reading of all articles be waived and that prior to the reading of a motion under the article, the moderator briefly summarize the content of the article to be considered, and further, that unless objection is raised, the reading of detailed motions be waived where the article as printed can, in the opinion of the moderator, be incorporated by reference on any motion presented. Second. Um, this, again, just allows us to speed up the meeting a bit and just summarize uh, the, the articles that are, have been presented. Um, any questions on that? All those in favor? All those opposed, that motion carries. Uh, I move that the following individuals be allowed to address the audience, Lisa Mead, town council, and Brenda Hill, town accountant. Second. Uh, by your bylaws, only town residents are allowed to speak and participate in town meetings, so this just allows other individuals with potential relevant information or advice to speak. And it, yes? Dan Pallotta. One additional, Dan Pallotta, the OPM. Uh, he might have to speak about the ATV 88 project. Okay. So there is one more request, Dan Pilato. And he's, is he present? Or? Yes. Hi, Dan. Yep. I saw you earlier. Sorry. Um, any questions? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. Okay. We're ready. Article 1. Uh, Mr. Hilchey. So um, since there are no past bills, I move that the town meeting pass over this article. Second. Do we even need a vote? Yep. That motion, that, that article is passed over. So one down. Article two. <laughs> article two. Uh, Mr. McDaniel. Thank you. I move that the town transfer $29,730 from free cash to provide for the installation of three additional mini split air conditioning units at the Deerfield Elementary School. Second. 
Thank you. Mr. McDaniel, if you could briefly summarize. Sure. Um, the town will receive uh, a $35,400 energy rebate uh, from the summer installation of the eight mini split air conditioner units at the Deerfield Elementary School, which cost $72,000 and was approved at the 2024 Springtown meeting. This transfer would allow the school to use the rebate funds towards the phase three of the air conditioning heat pump project, which will complete the installation of the mini splits in all classrooms. It's a project we've been doing over the years, and this will finish it up using rebate money. Thank you. Any questions on that article? All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. That motion carries. Um, I know the section over here was reserved for non-voters, but if anyone is looking to sit, we're fine sitting over there. I, I can count your votes from there. So, Just important that non-voters not vote on any article, and then if you do vote, just to hold up your blue tab. So, Article 3, uh, Mr. Blake, or Mr. Gilmore, I'm sorry. <laughs> I move that the town meeting pass over this article. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Article 4, Mr. Hilchey. Chalfant. Julie. Um, Julie Chalfant. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. That's right. Chalfant. So I move that the town transfer $300,000 from free cash to general stabilization. Second. Ms. Chalfant, if you could briefly explain. Sure. Um, so over the summer, the Finance Committee put together a set of financial policies. One of the policies that we recommended was that we maintain the general stabilization fund at 7% of the town's operating budget. Uh, you'll remember that we spent some money from the General Stabilization Fund earlier this year for some road repairs, and this replenishes that fund up to that 7%. Any questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Opposed? That motion carries. Article 5, Ms. Sylvester? I move that the town appropriate three million eight hundred and six thousand eight hundred and twenty five dollars for the eighteen eighty eight building project request and to meet said appropriation transfer three million five hundred and eighty five thousand dollars from the community preservation fund undesignated fund balance one hundred and twenty one thousand eight hundred and twenty five dollars from the CPA fund reserve for historic preservation and 100000 from the Community Preservation Fund budgeted reserve, all in a manner consistent with the proposal submitted by the Select Board and approved by the Community Preservation Committee, said funds to be expended within five years under the direction of the Select Board in accordance with the terms of an agreement to be entered into by the applicant and grantor and any unused funds to be returned to the Community Preservation Fund as required by statute. Second. Ms. Sylvester, would you like to briefly explain your motion? So this is a building that the residents in town have uh, said they wanted to preserve. It's a beloved building that has historic uh, significance to the town. Um, the Community Preservation Committee unanimously voted to support the project. It um, can renovate and restore the building and at the same time give us town offices uh, without raising any taxes. Any questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion as presented. Opposed? That motion carries. Article 6. Mr. White. <clears throat> I move that the town authorize the select board to convey, sell, or otherwise dispose of the parcel of land identified as approximately 2.1 acres, plus or minus, set forth in the assessor's records as map 169, lot 14, and owned by the town of Deerfield by deed recorded in the Franklin County Registry of Deeds, book 8306, page 228, for purposes of senior housing, and that the select board be authorized to enter into and negotiate all necessary and related documents <clears throat> subject to such restrictions and limitations as the select board deems appropriate, 
in order to effectuate the disposition of said parcel accordingly. Second. Mr. White, any, uh, would you like to explain your motion? <clears throat> I would be delighted. <laughs> um, or I'm going to read what's here, but I also have a couple of other words. So earlier this year, the uh, former St. James uh, Church and Rectory were taken in a friendly, eminent domain by the town, using CPA funds as town meeting authorized a year ago. So this article is not a yes or no vote on senior housing. This article is a yes or no vote on who's going to pay for it. So a yes vote empowers the select board to sell or lease the land to a developer. The developer assumes all the costs of building, maintaining the property. In addition, they pay property taxes on completion of the project over years. So the town gets recurring revenue. So a no vote means that the town is left holding the bag because the property was purchased specifically with CPA funds designated only for subsidized senior housing. And so if the town's holding the bag, the town is going to need to be building subsidized senior housing, which is incredibly expensive and is not in the finance committee's plan or the CIPC plan. Um, not only that, once it's built, we would have to maintain it and run it. We would have to staff it, and we'd have to have professionals who know about managing the field of aging. So a no vote means, oh, and there would be no recurring revenue because the town owns the property. So it's an initial expense and an ongoing revenue loss versus voting yes at no extra cost to the town. We get subsidized senior housing and recurring revenue. Um, so that's, that's the heart of the article. Thank you. Any comments or questions? We can make it to the microphone if you have them. Yeah, my, my question is. Uh, if you can state your name. And John you, Rutka, County Road, Deerfield. Thank you. My question is on the subsidized housing. Um, who determines how subsidized is it? Is that going to go back on the contractor if this goes through? I mean, they did, the housing around here is, is not getting cheaper the older you get, and the value or the volume of the subsidy for seniors who wind up getting pushed out of their houses in town here and still want to stay here, what are those numbers? Because that's a direct fallout of turning the property over to a private management company. That's, what, that's my question. Mr. Hilty, would you like to respond? You had your hand up. Um, sure, I'll start the response, but then I think I'll defer to somebody on the senior housing If they committee. wish to raise their hand, yes. Um, so the first is that um, we're intending to work with a group like uh, Rural Development Inc., which specializes in developing senior and subsidized senior housing. Um, they go out and they raise all the finance so the subsidy is based on income. So for instance, if you're a senior who's living on your social security check and that's your only means of income, you would be eligible for a, a great re reduction in the amount of what you would be responsible for paying for an apartment. There are percentages, those are dictated by the state and um, so can be up to 60% reduction, um, or perhaps more. Um, I would defer to Lily Dwight, who's the head of the Ad Hoc Senior Housing Committee, to talk further to that point. But um, the actual construction is on the private developer, and there's no real fallback position in, to affect the town. Thank you, Mr. Hilchey. Ms. Dwight, did you wish to speak? I just did, I want to ask the gentleman if his question has if, been if answered. If you can direct it to here. Yep, do you, do you have anything to add? or? Um, if, if his question, if he feels his question is answered, I'm fine. Sir, do you have any follow-up on your question? Well, it's still kind of vague, but yeah, all right. I heard Go so, for instance, let me just, hypothetically, if you had $800 a month in income, your rent might be reduced to, to $200 for the, for the month. Uh, that's a totally made-up yeah. number, but it's essentially to, to, uh, to allow people who don't have a lot of current income to be able to live in a, in a safe environment. 
I, I think there's some clarification. So I'm going to ask town council if they don't mind. There, oh, there are some specific. So Ms. Attorney Me. Sure. And I, I think just to, to clarify, there will be a restriction that will be required from any developer, which would um, in perpetuity guarantee those subsidies um, for as long as it's senior housing in perpetuity. Thank you. Yes. Hi, my name is Pam Predmore. I am uh, currently living at 36 Graves Street uh, in South Deerfield, and I have both personal and professional experience with subsidized housing in that I was a subsidized young single mother working all the time um, and was assisted by the housing authority who then hired me and I worked there for 21 years managing property they owned. I saw firsthand, both as I say personally and privately, the need for subsidized housing. Fast forward many years to living here in South Deerfield, yay, and 20, no, I'm sorry, 15 years ago, a dear friend of mine said to me, I'm really afraid we're going to lose our house. I don't know how we're going to be able to stay here. What's going to happen to us? And, and, and I couldn't answer that. There was no subsidized senior housing here in South Deerfield at that time. Personally, recently, I live on Grave Street. Two of my neighbors, two friends of mine, widowed women, have sold their homes could not find a place to live in South Deerfield and moved out of town. And that was very sad. I'm also a member of the ad hoc senior housing committee because I felt like I had this information that I could help provide. So I think the only other thing that perhaps Lily hadn't made clear is that the church building itself um, would have to be maintained. It, it hasn't been really maintained very well. No, no criticism of the previous owner. Um, and, and the town would have to do something with it, just as they've had to do something with the other buildings that they own here in town. And that costs money. So I think that's something else that needs to be kept in mind. Thank you. Great, thank you. Mr. Decker? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, just to correct one thing, I don't think that recording of a taking in the Registry of Deeds is a deed in itself. It's a recording because the property was taken by eminent domain, okay, which wiped out all the covenants that the Catholic Church put on the property, okay? Now, it's getting back to the uh, thing. We've spent 425000 plus of the taxpayer's CPA funds to purchase this property. And we haven't set a dollar figure as to how much money is going to get back in the CPA fund from this project, okay? And I think that the Board of Selectmen should be required to sell the property for the fair market value. And I'm not objecting to taking a second mortgage on the whole property for the 450 odd thousand dollars, but I think the People of town are entitled to get their CPA money back. And I personally don't want to see the church torn down or, or, and what have you. I, I suggested at one of the public meetings that they could move it to maybe the Brookside Cemetery would be a nice spot to, to move it. It moved uh, 100, 1, 1,500 feet uh, a century ago, and it probably could be moved again. And it would be a good idea to preserve that church. And, and the cemetery association appears to have an, an awful lot of land that they could probably put it in the corner and uh, be able to accommodate it. Uh, personally, I offered to, to accommodate them for the two family, for the rectory if they wanted, but nobody seems to be interested. But that's fine, I'll find somebody else to buy the property. But I really think that we ought to hard and think about giving away our property to rural development, which is what Mr. Hulshi, the chairman, basically said that we've been working hand in hand. It's like we're going to hand it to them. And I don't really think that's fair to the taxpayers who paid for that property with CPA funds. And uh, we've spent a lot of money. I've also suggested that we ought to go to that piece of property on North Main Street above what used to be Aussie Jewett's property 
that the town took for recreation or purchased for recreation purposes, and we're not being able to use it for recreational purposes, maybe we ought to put a cul-de-sac into there. Mr. Decker, kind of, we need to stay on point with the motion. So well, th that it other is. Property it's, a better, is not. it's a better site to put the senior housing than it is to, to put it on an undersized piece of property downtown. So thank, thank you, you very much. I know you're going to do what you want. That's fine. I'm going to, you've spoken, so we're going to, we'll, we'll get back to you. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, it's Jason Clark from 81 North Main. Um, I just, well, first of all, I do want to thank the senior ad hoc because I have been attending the meetings. They've been welcoming to the meetings. So I've been, uh, you know, it's been semi-informational throughout the last year. Um, but there are many concerns that I've brought up over the last, actually probably year and a half now about this entire project. And first and foremost, you're talking about the Bloody Brook. And I know that they're gonna tell you that they have answers with permeable pavement, this and that, they're gonna do all of that. But the fact is, is that there's actually better options with this property. You could actually shift the soccer fields over to the back of this property. You could actually keep the senior housing located on one unit, back at the other side towards the town hall, and you wouldn't have anything on top of the bloody brook. But unfortunately, none of these things have actually been addressed throughout this last year. We have issues with this property as far as privacy buffers on all sides because this is going to be commercial. You're abutting residential property with commercial property. So you have to have privacy buffers. You have to have a certain amount of feet from the bloody brook. You have to have setbacks. There's a restriction on the deed, which they basically overturned. They're turning that back into private hands now. So now they're saying that no longer exists. I've actually personally walked this entire property. I've actually used GPS with my brother. We've gone out, we've mapped what is left after all those restrictions, and there isn't a lot. Okay, there is nothing. You're not seeing those maps. If they build anything on that property, it is basically the St. James gets torn down. You're at most going to get about 16 units. So where are the other 30 units or 20 units that they want to go going to go? And those are the questions we're not being answered. You don't move forward with something until you have all the answers. Okay, thank you. Ms. Dwight. <clears throat> So I would like to address Mr. Decker's yes. question first and then Mr. Clark's, okay? So I'll do a twofer. Um, the CPA funds are considered our skin in the game. And so we get a multi-million dollar senior housing project for the CPA funds that we have already used for the property. Um, and that was actually part of the whole discussion when we voted at town meeting to purchase the property. So that's, the CPA funds won't be coming back to us. <clears throat> that's our skin in the game. But that's also how we entice a decent developer. Um, to talk about the wetlands, um, we worked with the Conservation Commission and did multiple extra, because we wanted to be absolutely certain that this was a buildable lot before we purchased it. And so we have done that work beforehand. The um, property, the St. James property, which is the only place that we can build, has 34.11% of impervious coverage right now. And the law says that we can, because it exists now, that that's the amount that we can build on, that percentage. And so I would also say that as part of the request for proposals, which is what goes out to the developers, we make the requirements about how important Bloody Brook is. But also one other point is any new development, they are required to do water management to meet the current codes. And the property right now is just 34.11% of unmanaged runoff. Yes. Hi, my Hello. name is Jennifer Remillard. I live on Conway Street. I'm also the director at the South County Senior Center. I wanted to provide some facts before folks went and made their determination today. The need for senior housing in South Deerfield is real. We currently have 5,176 people who reside in Deerfield with more than 1,639 older adults who are age 60 and over. More than that is <clears throat> More than 1,000 of those folks are age 65 and older. 
That's more than 20.6% of our population. Of our entire population, 5.7% live in poverty, with almost half of that being over the age of 60. This information is something that you can find on the census.gov quick facts for the town of Deerfield from 2023. In 2021 to the spring of 2022, we had a UMass needs assessment conducted. More than 775 Deerfield residents participated in this assessment. Of those who participated, they were age 60 and older, more than 37%, which is 287 people, would prefer to live in an older adult community. 27%, which is 209 people, would prefer to live in assisted living. And 4%, 31 people, would prefer to live in a multifamily home. More than 18% of our respondents, which is 140, who are age 65 and older in Deerfield, spend 35% or more of their monthly income on their housing. This means they have less to spend on things like food, medication, transportation, or housing maintenance and repair. Some things that you should know that we see at the senior center regularly, not just intermittently. We get calls from folks who now have to reside in a shelter. Some are living at the uh, Red Roof Inn. We have folks who are now unhoused. We have about four or five people we've worked with in the past year. Um, most recently, I've received a call within the last month. Did you know there are folks who've lived at the Hotel Warren for more than 30 years who've been waiting to find senior housing in a close community because they do not want to leave their family or friends? Did you know that there are folks, whether it's an entity or individuals coming into Deerfield, purchasing homes, telling older adults that they would like them to end their lease early so they can make modifications to the apartments and then double the rent to $1,500 a month? Did you know that there are folks in our community who cannot afford assisted living, but they can no longer afford to live in their homes? They don't have family who's local and they don't know where to go. There are solo agers who can no longer stay in their home. There are too many repairs to make and they cannot afford them. We previously referred people to LifePath and now refer folks to Community Action. In 2020, the Franklin Regional Housing Authority provided renovations to four units in Deerfield at a cost of more than $150,000 and funds for future repairs amongst these grants are limited. This vote is not about whether or not Deerfield will have senior housing. We voted on that a year ago to allow it. It will allow a vote for us to sell the property to rural development or others who put in for a request for proposal. It's not a hand in hand with the current select board. That's not how government works. Pushing the vote until spring only delays addressing an issue facing our most vulnerable in our community. As a taxpayer in Deerfield, as well as the senior center director, I urge you to vote yes. Thank you. Sir. I just want to make one more comment. Jason Clark from 81 North Main. I just want to make mention that I'm willing to bet that everybody in this room here Nobody's going to object, object to putting any senior into a home. That's not the point here. Okay, the point is, is being responsible. We've had several projects over the last couple of years, starting with the Dollar General, where that went forward, it ultimately failed because of wetlands. We went down the road with the soccer fields and the bandstand about a year later, and we ended up with the same problem. The town ended up in a lawsuit. It ended up costing the taxpayers money. We don't have a plan on this property. We're going down the same road for a third time, okay? There's no answers to that. Is there a guarantee that the St. James Church is gonna stand? Do we have an answer to that? We do not. There's no answers about these privacy buffers, about the, the brook, what they're gonna do. They're talking about permeable pavement, like I said before, but there's other options. This isn't about shooting down senior housing. This is about going about it properly so we don't end up into the same mess. We have a lot of land back there. There's soccer fields everybody wants to hold on to. We want the same St. James Church built, but now we're going forward with a new town hall. Let's sit back for a few minutes and take a deep breath and go with it in a proper fashion here, okay? 
It's, they're going to tell you they've been working on this for 10 years. Well, where are the answers to these very basic questions? Okay, I know what they can build on that property, and it's not 30 units. We don't have a map up there to tell everybody. So we're kind of voting on this blind right now. Okay, I appreciate the time. Thank you. Yes. Holly Lankowski, <clears throat> Stage Road. Um, this is frustrating for me because I think there's just a lot of different opinions in our town, and I think it's ripping our town apart. There's a perception that a no vote means a lack of support for senior housing. I am planning to vote no tonight, not because I don't support senior housing, but because I think there's too many unanswered things that have to be resolved first. This article is specifically about the St. James Church and the rectory parcel, but there's been discussion of adjacent parcels, the ball fields, um, maybe swapping out this, the space where the current town hall is. I mean, there's so much confusion in town and not clear information. Questions I have similar to what Jason just asked is, can you confine to the St. James property the proposal for 30 units on that piece only and not spill over or take away fields that we have for the kids who play on all the time? Can someone give us a written guarantee that those ball fields won't be touched? Our town has a lot of projects in progress right now. We have the Leary lot, the Tilton Library, and approved tonight. You can't interrupt the speaker. Continue. If Thank you'd like to call the vote, you'd have to come up to the microphone and follow the regular procedure. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. We have a lot of projects going, as I was trying to say. The Leary lot, the Tilton Library, and, if, and we just approved tonight now the 1888 building. We are in desperate need of a senior center. The senior center would serve so many more seniors than just senior housing. As Jason just said, which I, it was like he was echoing my words, we're not saying no to senior housing. We're saying, give us more answers, and if we push this off until our next meeting, what's the harm of that? I want more cooperation in town. I don't sure. want the we, they. I was outside this evening handing out flyers, just information. I never asked anyone how to vote. And someone said, as they were handing out their flyer, well, here's the opposing information. We are not opposed. People who have been working on this are not opposed. Um, I would just appreciate people being thoughtful that there's a lot of unanswered questions. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Call the vote. No. I, oh, sorry. We really? have a few uh, more. I, I'm, I'm running the meeting. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to, I'm happy. Um, the, the vote has been called. So for those of you that are not familiar with the process, or so what that means is that there is an immediate uh, stoppage of debate. Uh, the proponent of the motion, Ms. Dwight, would then have seven minutes to advocate for her position should she choose to use them. She will not be popular if she does. Um, <laughs> but I'm before we to get that. to that, we do have to take a vote on the call of the motion. So all of that means is that you are voting on whether you want to stop debate, that you feel that you have enough information, and you want to move on to that final seven minutes and then vote on the underlying motion. So again, this is... Thank you. Would you like to come to the mo uh, podium and make a motion? You've made a call of order, which is a parliamentary matter, and it takes precedent all, all over votes. I'd like to motion a call to order. Yes. You had people standing in line over here, which were citizens who were needed to be given an opportunity to speak. You have two microphones. So you need to make sure that the proper order in which you get people's responses or questions is maintained. This woman came down and immediately took control of this mic 
when you had this gentleman standing over here waiting in line to make his opinion. He needs to go first before she comes and does a call to order. Are there any others that support the call to order? Seven people are required to be in support of the call to order, so the motion is successful, and we will turn back to the other microphone. Ms. Dwight, or who is speaking? Well, um, I, uh, why don't you go ahead? Because hmm? <laughs> I apparently was invisible, so. <laughs> Sir, if you could state your name, your street, and your comments. Phil Hayes, North Hillside Road. And I didn't do that, honey. I didn't make her stop. I've got two questions. Uh, the first one is, has there been any discussion or research into whether this project is feasible if it ends up being something like 16 units? Whether it's economically feasible for a developer to do it? That's the first question. The second question is, the woman who spoke about the people in town who need housing, is there anything that's part of this that will give this priority, give those people priority over anybody else? Thank you. Mr. Hilton, would you like to respond? Um, I just want to clarify a couple of things. Uh, one is, we're not debating whether what size housing is going to be built, how many units are going to be built. This is really just a bookkeeping mechanism to say that if there were a plan that, that the town agrees would be in good use of this land, that we would allow the select board to negotiate a transfer of the property. Um, I know that... Uh, the Senior Housing ad, ad Hoc Committee has done a lot of research on this. People keep talking about 16 units. The plan that's been put forward is for approximately 30 units in a uh, three-floor pr proposition, but this is, again, early. The architects will design a plan that meets the requirements, the request for proposal. It will be done in a public process. There will be a review of the process where there will be plenty of citizen uh, participation to make comments and uh, make observations and encourage uh, changes in the plans, and then uh, it would be voted on. So I yield. I, I don't make these rules. I, I'm just here to enforce them. So your, your bylaws say that if a motion has been called and there is not a parliamentary matter which was raised and successful, and I appreciate that, that the motion to call now takes precedence. So I, I am simply enforcing your own bylaws. So at this point, there is a motion uh, to call the question. So again, the, what we're voting on here is whether you want to have no further debate. And if you want to have further debate, just you vote against the motion to call the question, and we go right back to where we were. So at this point, all those in favor, and I'm going to do it section by section. There's 353 individuals here tonight, and this is a two-thirds vote, so it's going to take me a moment. So we're going to do it section by section. All those in favor of calling the question, if we can start with this section here, raise your blue ballots. I'm only counting the ballots that I see. Okay, I'll, I'll explain it for the fourth time. Absolutely. <laughs> Right now, there is only a, mo a motion before you to whether you want to stop debate on the question. This has nothing to do with the motion that's before you other than whether you want to stop debate here. So if you vote yes in favor of this motion, there will be no further discussion other than the opportunity for Ms. Dwight to speak for seven minutes in favor of the motion or however long she likes less than that. If you vote no, uh, then we will go right back to opening up the mics and you'll continue to have a chance to speak if that's what you wish to do. And when that is exhausted or another motion to call the question is made, we'll, we'll vote on that time on the underlying motion. Does that, does that make sense? Or, so right now, the only motion is on whether you want to stop debate. If you want to stop debate, it's a yes. If you want to continue debate, the answer is no. So all those in favor of stopping debate or calling the question. Section one's all set. Middle section.
And we did allow uh, voters to sit in the third section, so we typically we wouldn't count, we will tonight. Ooh. voters at the front of the table? Anyone in favor of calling the question? Opposed? Uh, we do have uh, an individual who uh, had made an accommodation request, so she is participating by Zoom, so that's what's going on right there. Mr. Snedeker, is there a vote there? Or? We'll come back to Mr. Snedeker. Um, I'm sorry it gets confusing, but it, even though there's 363 individuals here, we're trying to get a determination as to how many people are opposed or against, so I do have to count the no votes as well. So I'm not, based on what I'm seeing, I just need to see uh, no's in this section here. No's in this section, and no's in section three. Mr. Snedeker, is there a vote? That you're all set, thank you. Front table knows. Sorry, I kind of asked you earlier, okay. but I appreciate it. Yeah, that motion, that, that motion does not carry by the two-thirds required, so debate is still open. Ma'am. Um, Charlene Galinsky, River Road. I had the opportunity to, to look at um, what the ad hoc senior housing group has had for proposals, and there are three uh, that I'm not sure if everyone in the audience is aware of that. And of the three our, um, proposals, only one had a proposal that allowed for 30 housing units. The others were less than uh, 30 housing. And the uh, third option was for 22 uh, people in on the ball field. And so I know the ball field is a, a concern, especially for families that have their children using them a lot. But my concern, here's my question to the powers to be. If a developer is chosen, and I'd like to know, I think a lot of us would like to know who's going to do the choosing, and if the developer hopefully gets to pay what Mr. Decker strongly suggested and at least get our money back so that we can put it back into the CPA funds, then do, does that developer go with the senior housing three proposals as a guideline? How, how does it work from that point on? I think the question some of us have, and I'm for senior housing, I'm a senior, I don't plan to leave my house, but there are people I know that will. But the problem is you have to qualify with subsidized uh, housing. And if you look at the Sunderland information sheet, which is what Deerfield would use, it, it's very clear how much money you need. And what if you don't get enough people subsidized in Deerfield to live there, even though there has been testimony that there seems to be a, enough interest? So who fills those units after? Does it go to low income? Does it go to families of people who would have? There, is, there are unanswered questions that I think a lot of us who are unsure right now of, of the project would feel very grateful to the town if we could have the answers that truly need to be answered. And my big question is, will the developer have complete control over this or will there be some, hopefully, work with, with the powers to be? Thank you. Mr. McDaniel? Yes, uh, I hope to uh, clarify a few things. We're way early in the process. We have zero proposals. There's absolutely no proposal on the table at all. The only thing we did was in, in the fall, or in, in, the, in the spring, was to purchase this property for senior housing, specifically, with CPA money. And that was gonna be our buy-in for any, that was our, that was our anti-in to get a multi-million dollar project in town was the purchase of this property. We would, we would, 
um, come into an agreement with a developer that still needs to be chosen, bids need to go out, there's absolutely no plan at all on the table, they would need to come up with a plan and say, is this feasible? We can get 23 units in here. We only get 23 units in here, it's not feasible. It doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. So there's, there's been ideas put together. You could put something on the ball field, you could fit so many units here. We were trying to figure out, is this property even developable for senior housing? And through the studies that we've done, it says yes, we should be able to get enough there to make something feasible. We don't know what it looks like, we don't know how many units it's gonna be, all of that needs to be designed, but it's gonna possibly be on this spot. We could go out to bid or have proposals, nobody bids on it. They all go, you can't fit enough units in there, or, too close to Bloody Brook, or, all those questions that you have get flushed out in the process. All this does is say we're taking the property that we purchased for senior housing, allow developers to come in and make proposals. Does this work or does this not work here? And is it affordable enough? Can they, get, can they build it economically enough to make sure it's affordable for seniors to come in? And then seniors in town do have, uh, the way they structure it, the, a percentage of residents in town have to meet the requirements uh, monetarily, but would have first access to it. Then it is opened up to other other areas. I think 70% um, would go to Deerfield residents first and then it's opened up beyond that. So we're way early in the process. This does this vote doesn't mean you're automatically getting 30. It has nothing to do with the ball fields. The ball fields are not on the table. Those were different ideas. Where could we put them? Could we do it here? Could we do it there? Other places in town. Just spitballing ideas in the beginning. Right now we're just looking at this one property. It has nothing to do with the ball fields at all. Hope that helps. It does help, but ideas can turn into reality. And I- Well, that's I, why you have leaders I, of the town. Right, right, and I, and I appreciate that. But I also know, I'm, I'm just gonna say, if you've looked at the application form that Sunderland used, um, I know it's income-based, but my question to whomever has actually worked on this, they actually ask for your assets. They ask what kind of car you drive. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's more than income-based. and. Um, in Sunderland, what happened, I think someone said only four families in Sunderland, this was coming from a, a town official in Sunderland, qualified because the others were not qualified for income. So then what, that's why the Sunderland um, facility has many people from other towns. So it, it's, it's, those are the questions so many of us have that would love to be to answered a little more um, objectively so we could make a really good decision on how to vote. It isn't about people not wanting senior housing. I understand. Housing at all. At it's all, all, and that will take place. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Dwight, are, are you here to explain something or to make I another point? I wanted to answer Mr. Hayes' question about the number of units, because I think the other questions have been answered. So um, we have met with a number of architects and developers, and basically, 30 is about the minimum number that pencils out for them to be able to afford to do it. So that's kind of the magic number. Mr. Clark. Yes. That is correct. It is correct. There's a point of order uh, that no one is allowed to speak more than twice in the same or more than once in the same article unless their point is to call the question uh, to explain and that's why I've been deferring to Ms. White slightly because she's deferring and she's explaining and she's a proponent of the motion um, or without leave of the meeting to do so. So at this point I am going to go to that microphone. Yes. Hi, Julie Chalfant, South Mill River Road. Um, my understanding is that this article allows, gives permission to the select board only to dispose of the piece of property that has the St. James Church. It does not give permission to the select board to dispose of the ball fields or the land underneath the current town hall or anything. Is that, correct. Is that correct? That's correct. Thanks. Sir, if you can state your name and your suite. <clears throat> John Cool, uh, Snowberry Circle. I have moved here three years ago and I'll I have come from a town 
a college town nearby that I won't mention the name of. <laughs> and uh, I witnessed over time living in that community a great number of good things that didn't happen because there was so much emphasis that in fact allowed the perfect to be the enemy of the good. And I realized that this is a beginning of a process. I also realized that we here tonight are not going to be looking at every proposal and crossing every T and dotting every I. I would urge you to let this process begin because delaying process costs money. I can tell you that from my previous experience. And delaying process delays outcomes. So please, I would urge you to vote yes for this. Thank you. Yes, sir. Gramaki Avenue. I also escaped the college town. <laughs> I would like to add six words at the end as an amendment. They would be subject to the approval by town meeting. If you'd like to make that amendment, we'll need it in writing here at the front I desk. I was hoping somebody could write six I'm words. hoping you could, because you're making the motions. If you can come up to the front desk, it's just the, the procedure. This is town meeting. But this is town meeting. This So, sir, town council is just pointing out, if you say simply subject to town meeting approval, that's what we're about to do or not to, so there should be some other caveat to it. I understand what you're trying to say, but I, I can't coach into it, but... Can we get that mic live, or...? It's not. There it is. There it is. You got You're it. All set. I'm assuming that the disposition is what would then be approved by the town meeting. This doesn't say the disposition exists yet. It says make a disposition, I believe. <laughs> subject to approval by town meeting is what I'm, comma, subject to approval by town meeting. Okay, the town council is advising that what you're, what you're proposing is going to essentially not get us any further than we are tonight. So I'm, ju I'm just telling you what town council right. is saying. Subject to the disposition by town meeting after the agreement is reached. Is everyone understanding the, uh, the amendment that's being made? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't understand it. If you, I'll take the motion if you made it. I'm having flashbacks to my red Warner grammar book from third grade. Um, so basically, the motion, and I'm gonna. I think what I'll do is just read the motion and add what's been proposed as an amendment at the end to maybe see if that helps, but. The motion was, I move that the town authorize the select board to convey, sell, or otherwise dispose of the parcel of land identified as approximately 2.1 acres, plus or minus, set forth in the assessor's records as map uh, 169, lot 14, and owned by the town of Deerfield by deed recorded in the Franklin County Registry of Deeds, book 8306, page 228, for purposes of senior housing and that the select board be authorized to enter into and negotiate all necessary and related documents subject to such restrictions and limitations as the select board deems appropriate in order to effectuate the disposition of said parcel accordingly. That's the existing motion. What's being uh, proposed as an amendment is to continue that statement with subject to approval by town meeting after agreement is reached. Um, so essentially, if I am understanding that, and I don't mean to interpret the amendment, but that if the select board were to reach an agreement, that it would have to come back before a town meeting for final approval. Is that fair summary of your amendment, sir? Yes. Thank you, sir. And town council, do you feel that's sufficient to accomplish that? Yes. So that's the amendment. So at this point, 
I'm sorry to jump around, but this is your process. Thank you. There's a second. Um, I think we understand the amendment. Are there questions or comments on the amendment only? And if so, to the microphone. Over here. Sorry, Trevor. Yes. I, I just think um, I understand wanting to have another bite at the apple, but you know, so we, we have a relationship with a developer. Now we've got to call another town meeting to cut everybody back here to make the same decision we're making tonight. I just think, you know, you, you have town leaders. There's a huge no, process no, 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 going on. Am no. I missing the, am I missing You're that? not. No, I, I'm just okay. trying to quiet the grumbling. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to get everyone grumbling. That's okay. I'm done. I just, okay. I just think. Is there someone at the mic, and I'll come back to you, Mr. Hilchey? Yes. Do, do you wish to speak on this, or? No. Mr. Hilchey? So the other, the other reason why we're asking for the authority to dispose of the land is to, because the first step in the process is to put out a request for proposals. Um, a developer is not going to go into it and spend money to develop a plan and develop construction drawings and study the land to figure out what can be built without a guarantee that if they spend this money, they have a reasonable expectation that if they meet all the guide, the, all of the uh, requirements of the RFP, the request for proposals, that they will be able to develop the project. So right now, we are, I, I believe town, town council can correct me, but I think we could lease the land for three years, but no developer is gonna build a multi-million dollar project on a piece of land when the lease is gonna lapse in three years. So we have to be able to go out to developers who are qualified to come up with plans and say, we have this piece of land, the town has the authority to transfer it to you, subject to you meeting the requirements of our uh, request for development of senior housing and subsidize senior housing on this lot. So that's the motivation behind trying to get this authority. Are you looking to speak on the amendment? Yeah, I w wasn't, but I will. Bruce St. Peter's from Snowberry Circle. Uh, I wasn't soliciting any. <laughs> <laughs> never asked Just a simple question, question but <laughs> briefly. Anyway, uh, we seem to be getting off track again, as we, several people have pointed out. And it still boils down to, and I mean no disrespect to anybody here, because this holds true in every town around, okay? The towns do not belong in the real estate business. You have an opportunity to pass that on to someone else that is willing to take the risk at no cost, and I don't know why that anybody would object to that. As far as a proposal, if you distrust your town leaders that much, then why have you voted a majority for them time after time? So I would suggest that the amendment be voted down. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Clark, do you wish to speak on the amendment and come to the microphone? Yeah, I actually was just thinking about this and it basically, you know, with what Mr. Hilchey had just said, it kind of brings back the whole point of we're kind of going out of order anyway. So this is almost a safeguard, you know, get the information for the property, a little more information about that to give to the developers and then we could come back here and actually get the, an honest vote with the, the people here. And it kind of piggybacks exactly on what Trevor was saying, that this is a process at the town. So bring it back to the voters. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on the amendment? So we... I just want to clarify that when the select board receives proposals from developers, you will have several public hearings where people can put in their comments and be part of the process of accepting or denying a proposal. Yeah. So this won't be all done behind closed doors and then happen. It will have lots of public input opportunities. Is that correct? Correct. Any other comments or questions on the amendment? So in terms of procedure, uh, we are about to vote only on the amendment. So on whether to add this additional language, which essentially, to summarize, would have any final uh, RFP come back before a town meeting for final approval. That vote requires a simple majority, 51%, not two-thirds like the underlying vote. So does everyone understand what we're voting on or are there questions on that procedure? 
All those in favor of the amendment as presented will do it by sections. All those in favor of the amendment as presented. Section two. You don't have a ballot? No, no, no oh. question at this point. Uh, I'm going to start over with section two. Section three. Table. Did you have a point of order, ma'am? Just, I was just clarifying. Are we voting for the amendment no, no, no. as the it amendment. is? Only the amendment. Yes. Oh, wait, the amendment. At, okay. Are we? Okay. <laughs> the amendment. We were just saying one If you want the amendment or not. Okay. I was just trying to clarify which. We've well, got, got answers from the audience, apparently. So. <laughs> All those opposed. That motion does not carry. We're back to the underlying uh, article motion before you. Sir. Okay, Bruce is up first. I don't I'm going to call okay. on you until somebody <laughs> corrects me. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Dave Wolf from South Main Street here in South Deerfield. Um, I'm in favor of senior housing. But unfortunately, I think we're putting the cart before the horse right now. Um, what I think we should be doing, and I think the select board actually has the authority to do it right now, is just put out the RFPs now and get the proposals. And then at the springtime, they can have it, they can have the hearings and everything done by the spring, have it done, and we can vote on that proposal, which we have to do at town meeting, just as we did at the Oxford property, and just have it sequential. By doing it this way, we're actually going to avoid one extra special town meeting by doing the RFP right now. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes. Turn again, huh? Yeah. Bruce St. Peter, Snowberry Circle. Uh, I haven't moved yet. Uh, okay, first off, one comment Mr. Decker made was uh, uh, getting the $400,000 back from the CPA. Uh, is... Ms. Dwight said, that is our skin in the game. Anything else that we have ever done, we've never got the CPA money back, other than the uh, past, many years ago, RDI uh, uh, investment on um, Brayburn Road, which turned out to be unfeasible. They could not find a developer that considered that was feasible, so the money came back. This situation, we have spent the money, period, okay? Win, lose, or draw, if nothing is done, we have still are not going to get the money back. As Ms. Dwight said, you're not going to get any, anybody to bid on it if we put nothing in the game. We have to do that. This is a great opportunity. The senior housing is set here for years and years. Now we have an opportunity to move on it, and it's still going to take several years to do. So I don't know what the total opposition is as far as the this there again, this is only for the select board to have in hand a piece of change that says, we are ready, we have the power to turn this over with approval with the townspeople for the, for the design and so forth, so we don't have to extend this out for another town meeting and everything else. It's no different than we did for, unfortunately, where the recreation field was. We did that in hand. They were ready to go. This one here, you have no other choice. The land cannot be used for anything else but senior housing. So as far as having a proposal, it might be this, it might be that. There is no other proposal on the board. It's senior housing, period. So I, I would say, I hope that people would vote on that and move that forward. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Uh, David, Decision Set Right Road. I have a question from Ms. Dwight. I thought I heard during the course of the discussion, I'm trying to reconcile 
what was presented and some of the information that you have, that I've heard through the discussion. You'd stated that this property could support, right now as currently constituted, a facility that would have about 16 units. But yet during the discussion, I thought I heard somebody say that to make it feasible for a developer, it would have to have 15 to 30 units. How is this proposal reconcilable if that is in fact what I heard and that what, that's what's true? Ms. Sure. White, if you'd like to explain. I can. Um, there are no proposals. There are no proposals for any number, but what we have heard from developers is that it needs to have a minimum of 30 units. The um, process of um, open houses that we've had, various architects come and propose various things. Um, they have had three different ideas for how to site 30, 25 to 30 units on that piece of property. Does that answer your question? Well, it answers the question, but it, it begs another question, is how do, you, how do you reconcile that with the information that was provided that says this property can sustain 16 units? You, I, I don't it, understand where that came from. I, I, I heard it, sure I, I thought I heard it, that, that, was, that this, would, this property, as it's currently constituted with all the setbacks and all the requirements of the property, that it could feasibly hold 16 units. Uh, that, uh, we have never said that. Okay. All the analysis yeah. <clears throat> showed right. that we can uh, build between 25 and 30 units on there. I, so I, I, I don't know I, where, I'm, I guess I'm asking where you heard 16. Here in this meeting, that's what I thought I heard. That was from somebody else, not oh, okay. from the Senior Housing okay. Committee. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I do want to answer a question about the process that Mr. Wolfram had. Um, that's important to understand. The, um, we cannot go with an RFP out to the world to developers without this step. They will not accept our RFP, so that if we do not do this tonight, then it's stalled. We don't go forward. Okay. Um, Attorney Mead, are you comfortable responding to that? Or? I can. If we can bring the mic live. Sure. Um, I can. You can step up to mine. If not. I think that's entirely true. Um, you would have to make it contingent upon town meeting authorization, which makes it very unattractive to the earlier point. So it's not true that you can't do it, but it would have to be contingent upon town meeting approval. Hello. Chester Sarasewski, 49 Lee Road. I own a single family home that sits on approximately one acre. I've got residents on each side. Each property is close to an acre. That's three acres of land for three single family houses. How are you gonna fit 30 or 16 houses on 2.1 acres? That's not feasible unless you're going up five and six stories. Thank you, sir. Does anyone wish to respond or? No, no, no clapping. No, no, no. Uh, anyone wish to respond? Any further comments or questions on the motion? Is everyone comfortable understanding the motion that is up here and has been uh, read a couple times at this point? Do you have a comment, sir? Thank you. My name is John Pachurik. I live at Sugarloaf Street. My comments are very simple. The way this idea came up was the town of Sunderland bought a piece of property, a farm. When they bought the farm, they invested about $230,000. They bought the property. They went out to bid. They got RDI. RDI is a tax exempt group from the Franklin County Regional Housing Authority. They set the example for Deerfield. They went out, they gave the property to RDI. RDI developed the property. Up to 70% can be local residents, providing they qualify. And I think that this is a good deal for the town. I've been retired from the select board for over 10 years. I was a selectman for 18 years before that. And as far as I know, we've always needed town 
senior housing in our town. And I think this is a time to move it forward. It will be good for the town. It will allow the people who have properties that they can't maintain to be able to sell the properties. And then they could move into this place. When they get through building this place, it will still be taxable, so it's not a giveaway to anybody. And to me, I would encourage everybody to vote and support this to keep this project moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Donna DePretto, Hillside Road. Um, I just want to say, somebody mentioned earlier that the town isn't into real estate. Why was this purchase first before having a plan in motion? And the answer, we need senior housing. Senior housing isn't, if you develop it here, that's wonderful. It's not gonna solve the problem for all the other residents that are slowly aging. It's spending and raising taxes is what is pushing people out of their homes. It's not becoming senior. Mr. Hilchie. I just wanna address the question about how. It's on. Sorry. Um, in Sunderland, they have a piece of land that they developed their project on that is essentially the same number of acres as the 2.1 acres that the town purchased for the purpose of developing senior housing. It was also in an area where there are um, water concerns. Those concerns were addressed through the cooperation of, with the Sunderland Conservation Commission. People oftentimes un misunderstand or or misinterpret what the rules that Conservation Commission has in place. There are setbacks for 200 feet on a, on a, a brook or a river. There are 100 for wetlands. But it doesn't say you can't build in those areas. It means only that you have to develop a plan that respects the resources and tries to improve the, the situation in those areas. So it's possible to develop uh, this site most of the houses in Deerfield, South Deerfield, if we interpreted what was represented to us tonight, could not be built if they had to, if there was an absolute exclusion on building next to the Bloody Brook. So all of North Main Street would not be possible. Now granted, that was all built a long time ago, but there are rules and laws in place now that say you have to respect the process of developing in a resource area. So. Uh, Sunderland faced the same things. They've got 35 units. They filled up within six weeks of the occupancy per permit being issued. And there are at least nine Sunderland families that are in that housing that were first qualifiers. And many of the other residents are from surrounding communities. You know, there possibly is even a Deerfield person in there. I, I tried to get that information today, but I was unsuccessful. <coughs> Mr. St. Peter's, you've spoken uh, once already, so yes. by our bylaws, we're not allowed to speak further. And oh, I thought it's, it's only once. Oh, yeah. okay. All those, in, uh, all those in favor of the motion, everyone understands what we're voting on. All those in favor of the motion, section one starting. We are voting on the motion that is on the board, which is the original motion that was made quite some time ago. <laughs> Um, and uh, it takes a two-thirds majority. So essentially, I, I can't summarize it, but the, the motion is as it's been presented. I'm going to count. You're all set. Uh, section two. Uh, I'm going to not count section three. Uh, I'm comfortable. I, I'm going to come back to section two. I, I'm going to. I'm sorry. I'm going to count section two. I. I. I the, it's clear what the vote is, but I, I'll count.
just check it out here. But, uh, this would have been a lot easier. But you're, you're too early in the process. You can't answer all that stuff until you find somebody to put proposals together. They're not going to propose unless they... You won't. You won't until the process is ready. I understand that, but even the stuff that's going on right now, it's not get, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Most, that's all right. You know. I, you never understand all of it. You know, it's somewhat of a gap. It's somewhat of a gamble when you do any project. Ten percent of the work. Not everything. Did he ask the table yet? Doing the novo. Oh, the novo. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Again, section one opposed to the motion. If you can just keep your arms up. Those at the table uh, in favor. Those opposed. I did. <laughs> You're going to get whipped with a wet noodle anyways. <laughs> Both sides are going to rip me apart. It's a good place to be, Blake. It really is. It gives you the most power. Trust me. Uh, no applause. Um, the motion carries. So, Article 7. The motion carries by two thirds. Article 7. I move that the town establish permanent protection of land located on Pine Nook Road, Deerfield, Massachusetts, as shown on the Town of Deerfield's Assessor's Map 81, Lot 3, including 18 acres more or less, whose deed is recorded at Book. 731 page 33 of the Franklin County Registry of Deeds for the exclusive purpose of conservation as town forest in accordance with Article 97 of the amend amendments to the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. There is a second. 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 So if you could explain briefly. Sure. The, the Open Space Committee has um, identified this particular parcel to per uh, permanently protect it's consistent with the town's adopted and approved open space plan. And um, our goals are to protect the, the uh, Pecumtuck Ridge and provide a recreational hiking network for residents to use in that area. Um, it's an 18 acre parcel. The town's owned it for over 100 years now. Um, it was acquired by the town in 1926 for town forest purposes but was never permanently protected. So that's what we're trying to achieve with this article. It would establish permanent protection of the land under Article 97 of the amendments to the state constitution. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Mr. Decker? Mr. Moderator, uh, could, could town council explain to the people here what Article 97 of the amendments to the Constitution of the Commonwealth says we can and can't do with that property. And what can we do with that property now that, that it, we couldn't do if we pass this? And I think that we've owned this property for 98 years and we haven't developed it yet. And I don't think it's a good idea to develop it 
but I don't want to own property that I have restrictions on that I haven't been paid for. And uh, if the state was going to come in and give us three or $400,000 for, the, for the putting it into this Chapter 97, uh, that might be a good idea. But why do we want to accept restrictions on a property we own that we can't really do anything unless we come back to town meeting by at least a two-thirds vote to do something with it? Yeah, I just think it's not good planning financially to give away your property. And that's what you're doing is giving away value. It might only be a dollar, but what the point is, you own it, and why do you want to accept restrictions on it? Thank you. Attorney Mead, did you want to comment? Um, I can comment on some of that. So Article 97 uh, to the amendments of the Massachusetts Constitution provides a strict restriction on any conservation and open space land so declared that only by a four-fifths vote of the state legislature can be removed and only after um, the, the person or the entity seeking to have it removed uh, replaces similar land of, you know, either in kind or more than what was taken, and there's a whole process. Um, this land was taken for town force purposes very clearly, um, but under some recent decisions in the last five years of the SJC, um, it was determined that if you specifically declare something, Article 97, it adds a layer of protection. Uh, that's not to say that if, so, if the town wanted to all of a sudden develop this as um, something other than town force, that there wouldn't be a stink made about it at the legislature or um, by DEP, but it adds a layer of protection uh, that doesn't currently exist on this land. Thank you. Yes. I'm Andrea Liebson. I live on Steam Mill Road. I'm a member of the planning board and of the open space uh, committee. The land in question hasn't um, been developed yet, which is good. And the open space committee is hoping to, and is planning, to apply for grants from the state to be able to develop a trail system. I understand there are trails all over Pocomtuck now, but they are not official um, trails of the town. And by doing this, um, our uh, application to the uh, Department of Conservation and Recreation will look much more attractive if the town has permanently protected the land. That is why we are pushing forward for Article 97 protection. Thank you. Yes. Uh, John Rutka, County Road, Deerfield. My question actually goes to the use of the land. The town owns a lot of forest land, and they've owned it for a long period of time. And on County Road, there's a couple of parcels that are forest, and nothing's been done as far as managing the land temper management or anything on it in the 50 years that I've lived there. By doing this amendment to this, or this article, are you basically just saying, okay, the trees fall down, they rot, we're not doing anything, we make trails through it, but we're not doing anything with the land. Uh, there's a forest right there, right at the end of Steam Mill Road where it goes to dirt that my first father-in-law wanted to log off 40 years ago and was told they couldn't because it was protected land. Why aren't we doing something to manage the, the forest that we have to get something back out of them instead of just letting the trees fall on the ground and rot? That's, that's my question. We don't seem to be doing anything with the land, just protecting it. Attorney Mead can probably comment on that partially. The, the, um the application of the Chapter 97 designation does not provide any further obligation on the town to do anything. So however you manage it now, this is not going to change that. That would be up to the, the select board um, and the open space committee. Well, the point that I was trying to make is that the lands that we've got, we haven't done anything with in five decades. This just is a status quo that uh, says, okay, it's protected. We don't have to worry about it. Is that what it basically comes down to? Does the proponent want to explain anything further on that? Or? Again, the Open Space Committee is trying to be very proactive in applying for grants for um, creating trails, protecting the land. In the past, not, that has not been done. 
And so based on the last open space and recreation plan that we came up with, we came up with a plan of action. And in order to apply for state grants, it's looked on most positively if the land has been permanently protected. So we are taking, um, we're moving to try to do that. I don't know, it just seems to me that we've got this land, there are a resource on it that could run, that could put money back into the coffers of the town, but we do nothing to, to get anything back out of it other than to look at it. Mr. McDaniel? Just uh, to your point, it's true. We, you know, we, we would love to manage our forest more, uh, look at carbon, you know, we looked at carbon um, <coughs> sequestration. Sequestration, thank you. Um, but, or even logging and stuff. It, it, it comes down to like not enough staff, not enough money and stuff. But we, you know, <laughs> back in the day, we seemed to find a way to make it happen and would love to, love to manage our forest uh, better too. Um, we we know we parking up there. You know, I thought if we did some of this work up on Pocumptic, we'd have a space that we could get some parking. I mean, people just come from all over and park all over and in the road and any side of the road they can and blocking trails and stuff. So that it does need to be managed better. And we we're hoping if protecting this, the state could give us some money to um, to ha have a more organized place to park, a more organized trail system, so anybody and their brother doesn't just go up and start making trails wherever they want to. But you're right, it, it, you know, we need to invest more in our, in our resources. Well, you're we right. We haven't had a town forester in how many years? Yeah, yep, haven't had one. Hello, oh, how are you? <laughs> Good so, evening. So there's all kinds of resources, and one resource is that we need to conserve our forests, okay? We, if you, our planet is warming at an alarming rate. You just have to look around you. If you don't believe the scientists, it's, it's happening everywhere. So that's one thing. It's a resource that we need to keep. They, they are sequestering carbon. They are helping to keep global warming from getting worse. It's also a recreation resource that improves our quality of life and makes our town more desirable for people who come to visit or people who want to live here. So I think there's a lot of good reasons to preserve it. And it's a wonderful place to hike. So um, I'm all for it. Thanks. Anyone who hasn't spoken, any other questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Done deal. All those opposed? That motion carries by 2 thirds majority. Article 8. Can I make a motion on that? So I, I was, um, this was a, uh, I'm going to make a motion to pass over this article. Thank this you, is, Mr. McDaniel. Article 9. Thank we, you. we can't go beyond that. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk again in the yeah. spring. If somebody makes a motion and continues on it, it opens up to debate. So it, it's why we, if they're moving past that, we, we're not allowed to really go beyond that. So Article 9. Somebody's making that motion. Good evening. If you could um, just state your name and your street. Oh, that, that would help. <laughs> no, fine. Yeah, Paul Olszewski, uh, uh, North Main Street, South Deerfield. And your motion? My motion is, I move that the town authorize and request the select board to take the necessary steps to purchase 300 electronic vote tabulators and associated equipment of any subscription services, if applicable, to be used for, for voting at all town meetings. Is there a second? Second. If you'd like to explain your motion. Sure. Um, and uh, I will try to be on point with everyone. Um, in recent years, continued, uh, people have expressed continued reluctance on attending town meetings because of the, the current voting process. As part of the research on this digital voting technology, we spoke with the town clerk from Conway, which implemented this form of voting for their meetings in early 21. 2021, excuse me. <laughs> Implementation by the Vendor Meridian Interactive Solutions of Pennsylvania took just a few months to complete and then on a timely basis. Representatives of Meridia were on site during the first few meetings to be available with a transition in the voting process. It was also noted that additional tabulators could be requested to lease on a temporary basis if meeting conditions warranted it. 
which obviously in this case would, would be one of those cases. It was reported that the residents have readily adopted it and are satisfied in being able to vote without worry of any retaliation or causing disagreements with their friends, family, neighbors on the way their votes were cast. Since implementation, their town meetings are running anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes less as the voting is quick, orderly, and accurate. Before each meeting, the tabulators are, ev are el evaluated for working condition. Since implementation in 2021, they have yet to change the batteries in them. Each checked-in voter receives a tabulator with a unique identifying, identifying number on it, which generates a receipt, receipt excuse me, which contains only the number of the tabulator assigned to them. These receipts are retained by the town clerk long enough to reconcile that all tabulators were returned and identify those that, that were not returned. And then they can track them down. The operating system for the tabulators only, and she stressed only, produces the total number of yes and no votes which are reported to the town clerk on their laptop, who in turn reports the results to the moderator who announces the results. No one has questioned this process. Other comments to share here is we have conferred with the town moderator about this petition request, and he is determining if, in fact, the bylaw on voting will require an, as, an amendment as part of this process. Other mass towns which have implemented this technology are, and included but not limited to, Lee, South Hadley, Orange, Ware, Uxbridge, Charlton, Lanesboro, Rutland, and, and Sturbridge. Again, that's in addition to. The operating system that's used is independent of the internet and is proprietary radio frequency, or RF protocol, with multiple layers of security checks, including direction, detection, excuse me, of any channel interference. This closed circuit system with a short range means that only people in the immediate vicinity, the system would be here, um, can vote. A lost tabulator is prevented from voting later on by removing it from the system and that would come out with the reconciliation who hadn't uh, returned their tabulator. And this allows, the operating software allows, it ensures privacy for each system, for each voter. In summary, our, our petition is, is, is straightforward in seeking approval to request the town move forward ahead, of, uh, ahead to, imp to implement this voting process that respects everyone's right to vote and privacy at the town meeting level. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes. Hi, my name is Ava Gibbs, and I live on River Road. Um, we defeated this when it was verbally brought up during a town meeting two years ago. And before that, it got discussed in a select board meeting years ago, but nothing came of it. Now the citizens' petition is asking the town to buy 300, you know, handheld. I basically were calling it clickers. Please note that prices are not mentioned at all on this article, not one word. Okay, the most fundamental reason that we should vote no is because it goes against the spirit of New England town meeting. Town meeting is a form of government that exists nowhere else in the world outside of New England. So uh, we talk about what the articles mean. It's a direct citizen lawmaking. We talk about it, and then along with the thorough discussion comes an open vote. I personally want to know how my elected officials and my appointed officials vote about issues, even if they don't speak up at town meeting. I'd really like to know that, because I have voted for them. The people that keep bringing up buying the clickers have revealed another motivation twice before at that select board meeting that my husband and I attended, this is before COVID, and also at that last town meeting. They omitted an additional motivation to buy those clickers in their article up there. What they said before is that they are afraid that their businesses and reputations will suffer if it is seen how they vote. Well, I say have the courage of your convictions. If you're ashamed or embarrassed about how, your vote, how you vote on issues, isn't there a message there for you? Now we should talk about the expenses. Uh, they want us to buy, you know, all these tabulators, these clickers, without talking about a new and ongoing cost to town budget. 
Um, they asked us to buy 300 clickers, and already tonight, I heard the moderator say that we have, I forgot the exact count, what, way over, 360, something like that. So, if we only had 300, how could you use them? Um, we would need more than 300 clickers, more expense. A big expense is the town staff time. That is not talked about. It is not just an initial cost. Clickers have to be distributed, they have to be picked up. They have to be stored correctly. These have lithium batteries. If any are lost, well, staff time has to go, I don't know how they do it. They call up a resident and say, your number and clicker hasn't come up, you must bring it in. I'm not sure how they'll do it, but I'm sure it's gonna take staff time. Um, unless they want us to like line up perhaps at the end of the town meeting and give them back, that will take a long time for us residents. All right, there's a lot of maintaining up here. And going back to um, the batteries, I did some research and the clickers, lithium batteries must be replaced every six months to a year, depending on how much they're used. So potentially they'll have to replace either, you know, every town meeting and every special town meeting. The batteries are a hazardous waste, so now there's the disposal fee for whatever, every six months to a year. Um, there again, there's no cost being told about. My bit of research was that it was at least twenty thousand dollars, but again, this does not include the staff time to regularly administer the program. I do agree that it does take a little time to count votes, but it's not a lot of time. Not enough time to justify the expense of the clickers and to not being able to see how our elected and appointed officials really think about issues. In any case, this is a process that I understood that we would need a bylaw change and by voting for this, I mean, how are we going to enforce it? It has nothing to do with the bylaw. So, I hope that you will all raise your hands and vote no on this article. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to respond and explain in any way on her point, or should we let other people speak? Uh, can I come back? Do you want other yes, people to speak? Yes, you can come back, uh, provided the questions and called, but yes. Right. Thank you. You'd be entitled to come back under that, actually. Yes. Yes. Mike Gilmore, um, Alan Dry, South Deerfield. Um, I just want to point out a little background. I have been a 30-year senior project manager for a utility that's very focused on cybersecurity. Um, I think we have moved technology that makes something like this very prudent for us. At some point, whether we do it now, we are going to do it in the future. We have more people in town, and for a moderator, and I give you a lot of respect, to count up 380 people are here tonight um, and try to accurately put that into a vote, to me, is very important for all of us. Um, my question, though, is that I think based on this meeting, a subsequent meeting we had, if, I think it was last year, where there were a lot of attendees, I was in even, even in a meeting when I first came to town where the whole auditorium in Frontier was full. I think we need to purchase more than 300 because in my job what I found is if you do initial purchase of say 400, you'll get a peer discount versus if you come in later and say I want to lease it or I want to purchase more. If now's the time to do it if we're going to do it. And the yearly cost for a subscription from what I've looked in here and I've looked online because I looked at I think there's three companies that do this kind of stuff, the subscription fee is not that surmountable. I think it would make it a more accurate vote. And honestly, unfortunately, in the world we live in today, where I think people are afraid to vote who they feel like because of the diversity and the division this country is going through. And I think you would get more of a person's true feelings if they could put a clicker into their vote and not have to worry about putting their hand up and having a whole bunch of people in a room criticize them. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Brennan, if you can introduce yourself. Uh, yes, uh, Mark Brennan, 66 Boynton Road. Um, my day job is uh, in being an engineering director. 
Uh, I manage multiple teams uh, that manage cloud infrastructure, IT, and security. And uh, as a person who's involved in all of those disciplines, uh, this terrifies me. Um, <laughs> uh, when I took freshman bio at UMass in a room that looked just like this, when I was part of the meat grinder, we had these clickers. And uh, we used that as a form of taking attendance and doing quizzes. And when we had moments where, you know, we, I think we had maybe about 30 people leave after the last article on the senior housing, uh, many students would pass their clickers to other people, and that's how they would get around the attendance and the, and the, and the quiz stuff. So, that is, that is something that kind of concerns me a little bit about doing this. Uh, having a strict accounting of the clicker turn in, I don't think is going to be possible without additional staff. I'm not saying it's impossible, but um, you know, I um, I've already seen this play out, and I, I know I know what the movie ending looks like. The second thing I want to say is we have something really special here in Deerfield. Out of the 351 towns in the Commonwealth, most of them operate under the mayoral city council system. We, for a few hours a year, become a unicameral legislature. We're not here to vote on a ballot. Um, we're kind of in, in, in our own way making law. So this notion of anonymously voting on things is kind of the antithesis of that process. And I, I don't think that we should be uh, you know, trying to replace that. I think it'll really be an issue with our town specifically if we need to pass a uh, uh, school uh, committee budget or you know, something that's kind of contentious. I think we'll have a lot of people that uh, you know, will kind of vote not for what they think the town may need, which is really what we're supposed to be doing here, but just you know, voting for their individual selves. So please vote no on this. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Darius Modesto, River Road. I'm also your school superintendent, and I have the honor to go to all your town meetings for the last seven years and when I was principal before that. So I've been to like 48 town meetings, so I really know town meetings well. And I've been in Conway, and I'm going to say I witnessed it, and it's a disaster. Yeah. It, literally, people don't know if they're pressing yes or no. Is it a yes button? Is no problem? There's no satisfaction that you're voting. You're pressing a button, and you're waiting, and you don't know if it actually went in or not. Did mine count? Comes to people's minds. People vote no, I think out of spite on things. Like, we're gonna donate the money back to the town. No. Um, we, we've asked this firefighter who's given the last 40 years in fighter fighting, who's asked if we extend past 65. 20 people vote no. And you're like, that would never happen if you had to raise your hand. And there is a process of raising your hand and, and being um, accounted for and, and standing up for it. And if you can't do that, then abstain the vote. I've had to abstain votes in my own personal life, being in this town in my position. It's part of it, if you can't do that. The other thing I want to talk about is just really briefly, you can improve counting in this room. Other towns swear in counters, two per each section, they count together, they confer they got the right number, and that's accurate counting, okay? I also want to say, if you are going to go this way, we just spent an hour and a half talking about going in gently, maybe we lease them one year and we try it out. Okay, let's see if people can feel what it's like to, time to vote. Those to yes, press now. <laughs> Those no, press now. Do we have a vote? And that's what it's like. And it, it, there's nothing, it ruined, Conway used to be a wonderful town meeting about community, and it's cold now. And then the, the final thing um, is that if you do move forward, Mr. Moderator, I would ask that you look into Perhaps being able to waive, if it, if it gets pushed through and I lose my, 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 my position on this, I think if you had a position where you could waive, like, was everybody vote to waive the reading of the thing? Like, there's a waste of time. We all have to wait 30 seconds, whatever the time is, for everybody to learn how to click. If you could use it maybe only for contentious votes where you have to count and, and be able to do people showing and then going into counting, some kind of um, bringing the two together. So thank you. Thank you. Um, yes. Aaron Clark, Main Street. Um, so I'd like to extend off of Mr. Gilmore's statements earlier, but uh, another thing I see is I see pretty much the same 300 faces in here every town meeting. So it's 300 people voting for 4,000 people. I think if we pass this, we could see four or five, 600 people coming to the town meeting. Uh, the price of this is 
in my research about fifteen thousand dollars for the three hundred, and I think the town's wasted more money than that on other issues, and I think we can afford this. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yes. My turn. Uh, yes. So, we've had a a. a, a a uh, critique of how things go on in Conway, and again, I'm talking right to the town clerk, so I guess it's a matter of opinion, but basically when you finish with the town meeting, what have you, you go, as you come in, you're handed it, and it's extra, about extra work and, and, and all this, and then when you leave, you drop it in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a receptacle or whatever, and then it gets, like I say, the receipts, they reconcile, and they figure out, you know, make hopefully everyone, everyone turned it back in. Thus, obviously tonight with the, with the turnout for this town meeting would obviously you know, would knock the uh, 300 out of the water. So I am, how would I make an amendment to go to 400? Uh, you could just make a... I mean, just, just, admit, just, just, you know, why don't we just get it up there? And that, you know, yeah, that just... uh, you could just make a written amendment. So we've got a pad. Mr. Gilmore, looks, I'm seeing a pad, so... <laughs> I kind of wanted to let the debate get out yeah, to a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to, um, I just want to comment for a minute if everyone could kind of keep their attention here for a sec. So uh, in order to acquire essentially anything in town, uh, there is a legal process that needs to be followed. Uh, the finance committee needs to vote on it, recommend it. The select board has to be involved. And so none of that has happened. So the reality is anything that you vote on tonight uh, certainly will be, uh, I would hope, respected and, and taken further, but it will only be advisory. It, it will not accomplish what, what the proponents are trying to do this evening. And I, I've talked to the proponents about that and they do understand that, but I, I do think it's important to understand that, that anything that this vote does does not have funding behind it. Yeah. Uh, our bylaws that control this meeting that I've spoken about a couple times would need to require this to be the form of voting, so there'd have to be a change to your bylaws, so that is another matter that has to come before the town meeting. So it's healthy and good to discuss this tonight and get a good temperature on whether it's something that people want to continue with, but I do think that people should understand that the ultimate uh, outcome of tonight will not decide this issue with any finality, so I just keep that in your mind as you, you discuss. So. Thank to the amendment. Thank and um, I will change the amendment to the motion to say, I move that the town authorize and request the select board to take the necessary steps to purchase electronic vote tabulators and associated equipment and any subscription services, if applicable, to be used at all town meetings. Thus, what I'm saying is we'd leave it to the select board to determine the amount that would be necessary. Certainly. For, for Thank appropriate. you. Okay. Now, I, I just, if I could just say a couple other things. Um, uh, so we have to just go to the amendment. So okay. are you commenting on the amendment? You can continue, but if it's back on the underlying, just give that a moment. Okay. Yeah. So there's an amendment to uh, essentially allow the, we're not voting on the motion, just whether the select board could determine how many clickers to acquire if there was a decision in the future to acquire them. So all those in favor of allowing the select board to determine the number, all those opposed, that amendment carries, so we're back to, uh, or we're not back to, we have a revised motion that's as it reads, but it allows the select board to determine the number of clickers, if we're gonna call them clickers, it's not what the motion says, but we understand. So go ahead. Hi. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> clickers. Name and uh, uh, Erica street. Higgins Ross, Green Oak Crossing Road. I just wanna quickly say that I probably, like a lot of you, equally um, dread and love town meeting every time, and um, I dread it because it goes on and on, and it's really, hard and tiring and we're all not really my busy. Fault. And not your fault. <laughs> and he's great. Um, but I love it because kind of what Ava said, that it is a place where we get to talk to our neighbors, we get to talk to each other, and it's not comfortable all the time. I called a point of order today. That wasn't comfortable for me. That felt bad. I thought, is that going to upset someone? But that's the point, and that's what civics is, and that's what democracy is, is that we talk to each other, we we take bold stands, we allow ourselves to change our minds, we, we listen to each other, and then we make a vote after we've really considered each other's opinions and thoughts and experiences, and then we boldly and bravely raise our hand and say, this is what I believe, and what we need to be working on is being civil and respecting our different opinions, not 
making everything secret and silent. So thank you. Ma'am. My name is Gabby Richard Harrington. I teach technology at many school districts in Massachusetts, and I agree with the gentleman over here said I also love technology and despise it at the same time, and Mr. Modesto. If you bought 300 or 400 of those, you would have four or five people in every section here saying, mine's not working, I don't think mine's working, the battery's not working. <laughs> when you decide that you want to add to them, whichever ones you've purchased no longer exist, and you will have to replace all of them, or something's gonna happen. I mean, I work with this stuff all day, every day, and there's always five kids in a class that said, that's not what I chose, my finger slipped. You're, there's just no way. Um, the year I lived in Nantucket, there were probably twice as many, maybe three times as many people that showed up at the town meetings and the special town meetings, and they did vote in people with clickers. And they walked up and down the aisles, and we had an accurate count in a very short time. Clickers are not the answer. Sir. Yes, my name is Dwight Manley. I live at uh, 228 Lower Road in Deerfield. And um, you might think that you're anonymous because you have that clicker in your hand and that you vote for an article. You vote yes. Maybe you click it twice. Well, how does the system know that you clicked, that you clicked twice? There's an RFD. RFID, a radio frequency ID on your clicker. And that system knows who you are because when you signed in to accept the clicker, you are associated with that ID. And so the system knows that you've clicked twice. It knows how you're voting. So you might think you're anonymous, but you are not. <laughs> There's no, I, I, I just would like to respond that it, apparently everyone's got all the answers, and uh, like I say, we worked, we worked. Uh, you know, need to be in a micro and don't we, interrupt the speaker. Um, thank you. Um, you know, we 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 tried to answer the questions in the process of getting this citizens petition, all the signatures. There are a lot of people, a lot of us, they're natives, long term people that have this feeling about not coming and the reluctance because of, of the style. And, you know, I think we're jumping the gun if you don't have the facts in terms of if you press it twice or whatever. I, we don't know that. Our, our, whole, our whole purpose was, was to seek approval so that the, the, the town officers, the select board could move forward. We don't have the answers. And technology has, has, has problems. Nothing is perfect. But if you want to get people to come to town meetings, you've got to make it that you don't have get a cold shoulder or looked at, you didn't vote the way I wanted you to, or you didn't vote the way I'd like you to, or what have you. And this is what we need to return, you know, get these town meetings back to what they used to be in this town. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McDaniel. Just, just one comment on it that, um, you know, when, when we have had votes in the past, we, we've done paper ballots, you know, we run them up to the front and that, you know, that seems to work pretty well too and it doesn't, doesn't cost a bunch of money to do. It does take some time and shuffling things around. I, I, I get nervous about losing that spirit of New England town meeting and vote, voting your, you know, voting how you feel and being able to sway others in your opinions. Um, it's not always comfortable, especially sitting up here, but it, it's, um, <laughs> but it, it's a, good, it's a good thing we have. I'd hate to see it go away with a click. So, Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, bon Bonita Weeks, 264 River Road. Um, I would like to say that it's nice to say we ought to have the courage of our convictions. But most people here haven't experienced what we've experienced, which is calls at midnight or one in the morning, harassment calls because we voted some way that someone did not like or did something that someone did not like. It's hard for me to come up here and speak. It is very hard for me to come up here and speak. But in the reality of today's society, it happens. And when it happens, it's traumatic. 
we are not saying, do not get, come up and talk. Do not come up and try to say, change someone's mind about how they feel about something. We are saying we have a right to make our vote privately so that we do not get harassed or get neighbors angry at you, neighbors who you're friends with all the time and who you want to be friends with. But it is very, very difficult when you make a decision that someone doesn't like and you get anonymous calls in the middle of the night, when you get people saying, we will get you out of town, we don't like what you are doing, we don't like the decisions you make, and it is real. People say it doesn't happen, but I know it does. So there is a reason there are some of us who feel like we should have a right to a private vote on contentious items at a public meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gilmore. Yeah, just a couple of thoughts as well. When I uh, started out uh, my campaign, it was a lot of people that came up to me and I was asking them about town meetings and they said, no, we don't go. We don't go because we're state workers or we're business people or we're afraid of what we, how we should um, present ourselves at the town meeting. And that was, the clickers were my idea in the beginning. And the flavor of the town meeting is the discussion. It's not the vote. It's you getting up and explaining, you know, your position on certain items, and then at the end of it, you vote. Well, one of the things that was brought up tonight, I don't want a clicker. I will have this up here because I'm a voted, I'm an official of the town. I won't use a clicker. But there are people out there that do need it because they want to participate and they're unable to. And one of the biggest things as a trooper for 33 years, we were supposed to stay apolitical. So if we got involved in a controversy and it got back to our superiors, we were in trouble. So I'm just saying the clickers can be used and we don't have to get 500 of them because there are people in here that want to raise their hands. And whether it takes you know, an extra one or two people up there to sign the clickers and make sure they come in at the end of the night I don't think that's too much to ask for. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Kathleen Brennan, Boynton Road. Um, I just have a question. Are we allowed to request like you a- Can you sneak up closer to the mic? Sorry. Sorry. It's very it's high, I apologize. Yes, not for short people. <laughs> um, are we allowed to request a private vote on contentious issues? You are. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a secret ballot, essentially, yes. Yes. Yeah. Under your current bylaws. That would have to be voted on and approved, yes. Yes. Um, I just want to say there's a lot of conversation about um, people not feeling comfortable, people don't want to come to town meeting. That's what we should be focused on. There are parents over here with little kids at dinner time who I'm sure are getting increasingly cranky. I'm increasingly cranky. I'm hungry. We should be focused on getting people involved in this process, and I'm very nervous about setting our sights and ambitions too low. Can we just get more people in the room, period, then have this conversation? Thank you. Thank you. Emily Johnson, Sawmill Plain Road. Um, I just want to clarify that the current way the system works, uh, we do have the capacity to have a private vote. Is that correct? Uh, a motion would have to be made and seconded and debated and voted okay. upon, yes. So but that's that is an option. So fully possible with our current system? Yes, and okay. by the members present at that particular meeting, yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor, uh, do we understand the motion? So it would be a, a yes vote would be in favor of clickers and no vote would be uh, would end that at this point. 
All those in favor of the motion, section one. Section two. Section three. Front table. Front table. Just those opposed. Oh, that's it. Everybody can go up. This is a simple majority vote, and the majority is clear, so that motion does not carry. Uh, that is the last article. I do make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you all.